Why is it really so difficult to heal after being with a narcissist? Why is it so difficult to move on? I think the two answers people often don't see. The first one is uncommon, but I haven't really seen people examine the second answer yet, and I think this might be the missing piece of the puzzle. The first answer, of course, involves letting go of the past. It involves accepting that the person that we were in a relationship with never existed. The person that we started the relationship with. What I mean by that is the person that we started the relationship with was a fake persona that was calibrated specifically to seduce us. And the person who we ended up with was not the person we started out with. Otherwise, we would not have started the relationship if we knew how it was going to turn out. So to some extent, we were scammed. Now, one thing is mourning the end of a relationship where two people just can't make it work out, and that can be tough, and that can be sad. But it's something very different to mourn the very existence of the person that we thought we were in a relationship with. That's not easy. And it is also fundamental in order to be able to move forward, because once we mourn that person, we no longer are tempted to start again a relationship with this person and their attempts to hoover around us or to get us to give them another chance will not work because we see them for who they really are. And this specifically is why we are reluctant to do it, because we don't want to see them for who they really are. We don't want to see the face they are truly showing us, because that would involve letting go of the existence of the person for whom we felt feelings, but who never existed. I've discussed this first part before, and I believe other people talk about it. Now, the second part that I don't really see, and I was just thinking about this the other day, is that apart from mourning them, we also have to mourn ourselves. What I mean by this is, we often see people asking, will I be able to go back to the person I used to be? Will it be possible for me to go back to my old life? And of course, when we ask this question, we know full well that the answer is no. And we also know that when we ask the question, we are reluctant to accept this answer that is no. Part of us might think, this is heartbreaking because I liked the old me. The old me was nice. The old me had a certain view of humanity. We were positive. We were optimistic. We believed the world was full of good people. And I don't want to let go of that. But I would suggest it's fundamental to let go of this. It's fundamental to let go of this because the old us was the us that led us into an abusive relationship. It was the us that was open to being abused in a relationship because we did not know how to handle the reality that was in front of us. If we're tempted to use binary logic, which is usually a terribly bad idea, and it's one of the tricks that narcissists use to manipulate us, binary logic would tell us either you remain the person you were and you try to go back to this person or you burn everything down and you are a nobody. And then this opens the void, and I believe there might be part of this with narcissists, where they burn everything down, they give themselves to the void, and they want to create chaos and destruction and bitterness and resentment around them. It's a feeling, hypothesis. Impossible to prove, impossible to disprove, but something to work with. But mainly, something to be aware of. We do not want to give ourselves to the void. But between saying, I will be 100% the person I was before, in other words, I'll travel back in time, not pretend that nothing happened, which is a very mature and responsible way of acting. We know that if we do that, we'll be back in another narcissistic relationship. So that's one option. The other option is burn everything down. But I think the more responsible way of acting is to say, let me burn everything down and see what remains. Let me take seriously all the criticism I can lay upon myself. Let me take full responsibility for what I did, but no more than my responsibility. This is not blame. This is not guilt. This is responsibility. Let me take my full responsibility and that will tell me what I need to burn down. Once we burn it down, let's see what remains. 
and let's build back from there. For instance, in my experience, I took all the criticism leveled against me extremely seriously. I assumed it was 100% true. Reality is that it was not 100% true, but it wasn't 0% true either. And of course, I can be a harsher critique of myself than anyone else can be. So it is true that I lied. It's true I lied to myself. I didn't want to see what it was I was seeing. I saw signs, I saw signals, I wanted an easy explanation so I could put my fingers in my ears and pretend I didn't hear and close my eyes and pretend I didn't see, even though the truth was right there in front of me pretty much from day one. There were red flags, I didn't want to see them. I lied to myself about what I was seeing. I also was a coward. I walked away from conflict. When I saw things I didn't like, instead of putting them on the table, looking the person in the eyes and saying, we're going to talk about this, and I'm willing to walk away, I preferred to not put it on the table, because I was afraid of walking away. I didn't want to. I wanted a specific outcome. I wanted things to work out. I was basically inviting the person to lie to me, to basically say, I will ignore what happened, provided you give me or semi-convincing explanation. And I'm not going to dig. Just give me something that's good enough so I can lie to myself. Why? I wanted the outcome. I was not willing to simply see reality and walk away. These are not traits that I am particularly proud of. And these typically are traits that I was allowed, thanks to this experience, that I was allowed to examine and realize these led me to a situation of absolute and pure hell. And if I wanted to avoid this in the future, I had to get rid of this. It's not easy. It's not easy to do. And when afterwards people lied to me or deceived me, it hasn't been easy to sit them down and say, you lied about this and that's a problem. And I will be having the conversation. But you know what? It became much easier it became easier to have these conversations faster. It became easier to pull the plug faster and became easier to simply state facts and reality. This has been helpful when talking with toxic people. And it's also been helpful when talking with regular people because it's easier to provide a framework for a healthy and respectful conversation. But this was only possible because I was willing to let part of the past die. Not all of it, part of it. I was willing to let go of the parts I was maybe ashamed of, the parts I knew that I should have done differently, but I didn't know how. I didn't really have the framework for deciding these are my values. And when I let the faults get burned away, I saw what remained. I dislike beliefs. I dislike liars. I dislike people who proactively make the world worse. I dislike ideas that make the world worse. I dislike people who want others to lie to them by commission or by omission. I dislike people who want to manipulate others instead of respecting others. We can have conversations and disagree, but part of the conversation is simply comparing ideas and seeing which idea makes most sense. But the toxic people want to force outcomes. And those people, I dislike the way they operate. They can change the way they operate, of course. They can change their behavior. And of course, I would welcome that. But the way they operate, regardless why they do it, regardless of their intention, they are making the world worse. And when you go through the process of feeling that everything around you is crumbling because it was simply built on quicksand, when you put in the effort and you had expectations and you're being hurt and you are feeling completely lost because you no longer know who to trust, if you can trust yourself, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, that feeling is nightmarish. If it happens through nobody's fault, it's not pleasant. But when somebody has some kind of defect in their character and the personality that pushes them to make things significantly worse, I really dislike that. So I was able to tap into this and I thought, how have I been contributing to this situation and what can I do to stop contributing in the future? By doing this, I let part of my past self go and I mourned it 
because it, yeah, it was very nice to be this more innocent, naive, trusting person. But I saw the price there was to pay. And that willingness to let part of the past go is what helps us grow up from being a child and becoming more of an adult. The past self served us, and if it no longer serves us, we let it go because the past self is not us. Our ideas are not us. Our ideas are either accurate or inaccurate. We can like them, we can wish for them to be accurate, but wishing for them to be accurate does not make them accurate, and it's childish to be rejecting reality. So the willingness to reject inaccurate facts, to reject an inaccurate model, the willingness to adapt to reality and think, how do I make the world better? That's only possible when we are willing to let go of the past self and see what remains. See what part of us is the most important and how can we adapt ourselves to reality better so we can get better outcomes for ourselves and for others. Once we're willing to do this, not only have we let go of the fake persona of the toxic person, but they've largely become irrelevant because they've simply been a symptom that we had things to mend in ourselves. But even that becomes less relevant because now we can focus on having actually a plan, having a mission, having a project and thinking, I need to overcome that which is inside me before I can have anything better in the future. After all, the past self, would we really wish that onto an equal partner whom we respect? Maybe not completely, but maybe the more we improve ourself, the higher the caliber a future partner we can get. And maybe that is a worthwhile goal. If we're willing to chase this goal, it's much easier to accept the price that we are paying which is letting go of the other person and the past self. If all we have is a price to pay and no reward, it's very difficult to accept that because there's nothing in it for us. But once we do understand what it is we can be getting, and especially what it is that we are forsaking if we're not letting go of the past and if we're not moving forward, then it's much easier to take the action, embrace the action, and realize that it's entirely worth it. After all, if you know that the perfect partner was waiting for you in a beautiful home, made lovely for the two of you, with healthy communication, an ability to overcome disagreement, full support and also full respect, and all you had to do was flip a switch in your mind, it might be much easier to flip that switch. The only thing here is the other person is not standing in front of you with the keys to a beautiful home. Well, maybe not, but you know that if you want them to be there one day, you'll have to flip that switch and you will flip that switch when you're ready to do so. So maybe for now, start visualizing what it is you aspire to, process the information about letting go of the fake persona of the other person, letting go of that which was inside us that led us to this toxic situation, and then see if it's a bit easier to move forward.